Hi again, my little friends. I am filming chapter 13 today, right? Chapter 13, yeah. Um, it's another long one. I don't know how I got these. I apologize again. Um, I'm gonna try to go as fast as I can. I'm not gonna waste time on the intro. Chapter 13 is titled, A Troggle Humper for the Flesh Lump Eater. Here goes. They is always having 50 winks before they goes scumpering off to, a, to hunt human beings in the evening, the BFG said. He stopped for a few moments to let Sophie have a better look. Giants is only sleeping every then and now, he said. Not nearly as much as human beings. Human beings is crazy for sleeping. Is it ever occurring to you that a human being who is 50 is spending about 20 years sleeping fast? I must admit, that never occurred to me, Sophie said. You should allow it to occur to you, the BFG said. Imagine it, please. This human being who says he is 50 has been fast asleep for 20 years and is not even knowing where he is. Not even doing anything, not even thinking. It's a funny thought, Sophie said. Exunkily, the BFG said. So what I is trying to explain to you is that a human being who says he is 50 is not 50. He is only 30. What about me, Sophie said. I am eight. You is not eight at all, the BFG said. Human being babies and little chiddlers is spending half their time sleeping, so you is only four. I'm eight, Sophie said. You may think you is eight, the BFG said, but you has only spent four years of your life with your little eyes open. You was only four, and please stop higgling me. Titchy little snapworm whippers, nope, titchy little snap whippers like you should not be higgling around with an old sage and onions who is hundreds of years more than you. How much do giants sleep? Sophie said. They is never wasting much time snozzling, the BFG said. Two or three hours is enough. When do you sleep? Sophie asked. Even less, the BFG answered. I is sleeping only once in a blue baboon. Sophie, peeping out from her pocket, examined the nine sleeping giants. They looked even more grotesque now than when they were awake. Sprawled out across the yellow plain, they covered an area about the size of a fo football field. Most of them were lying on their backs with their enormous, enormous mouths wide open, and they were snoring like foghorns. The noise was awful. Suddenly, the BFG gave a jump in the air. By gumfrog, he cried. I is just having the most wopsy whiffling idea. What? Sophie asked. Wait, he cried. Hold your horse feathers. Keep your skirt on. Just you wait and see what I is going to bring about. He galloped off fast to his cave with Sophie hanging on tight to the rim of the pocket. He rolled back the stone. He entered the cave. He was very excited. He was moving quickly. You stay where you is in my pocket, Huggy Bee, he said. We is doing this lovely bit of buck washling both together. He laid aside the dream catching net, but hung on to the suitcase. He ran across to the other side of the cave and grabbed the long trumpet thing, the one he had been carrying when Sophie had first seen him in the village. With the suitcase in one hand and the trumpet in the other, he dashed out of the cave. What is he up to now? Sophie thought to herself. Peep your head up good, the BFG said. Then you will get a fine winkle of what's going on. When the BFG came near to the sleeping giants, he slowed his pace. He began moving softly. He crept on his toes toward the ugly brutes. They were still snoring loudly. They looked repulsive, filthy, and diabolical. The BFG tiptoed around them. He went past the gizzard gulper, the blood bottler, the meat dripper, the child chewer. Then he stopped. That he reached the flesh lump eater, pointed at him, and then looked down at Sophie and gave her a big wink. He knelt on the ground and very quietly he opened the suitcase. He took out of it the glass jar containing the terrible, nightmarish troggle humper. At that point, Sophie guessed what he was doing. Nope. Sophie guessed what was going to happen next. Ouch, she thought. This could be rather dangerous. 
She crouched lower in the pocket so that only the top of her head and her eyes were showing. She wanted to be ready to duck out of sight very fast should anything go wrong. Excuse me. They were about 10 feet away from the flesh lump eater's face. The snoring, snotting noise he was making was disgusting. Every now and again, a big bubble of spit formed between his two open lips, and then it would burst with a splash and cover his face with saliva. Taking infinite care, the BFG unscrewed the top of the glass jar and tipped the squiggling, squirming, faintly scarlet trog humper, troggle humper into the wide end of his long trumpet. He put the other end of the trumpet to his lips. He aimed the instrument directly at the flesh lump eater's face. He took a deep breath, puffed out his cheeks, and then woof, he blew. Sophie saw a flash of pale red go darting towards the giant's face. For a split second, it hovered above the face, but then it was gone. It seemed to have been sucked up the giant's nose, but it all happened so quickly, Sophie couldn't be sure. We had better be skittling away quick to where it's safe, the BFG whispered. He trotted off for about a hundred yards, then stopped. He crouched low on the earth. Now, he said, we is waiting for the gun and flames to begin. They didn't have to wait long. The air was suddenly pierced by the most fearful roar Sophie had ever heard, and she saw the flesh lump eater's body, all 54 feet of it, rise up off the ground and fall back again with a thump. Then it began to wriggle and twist and bounce in the most violent fashion. It was quite frightening to watch. Yow! roared the flesh lump eater. Ay yow! He's still asleep, the BFG whispered. The terrible, trog humpling nightmare is beginning to hit him. Serves him right, Sophie said. She could feel no sympathy for this great brute who ate children as though they were sugar lumps. Save us, screamed the flesh lump eater, thrashing about madly. He's after me. He's getting me. The thrashing of limbs and the waving of arms became more violent by the second. It was an awesome thing to watch such a, such a massive creature having such mighty convulsions. It's Jack, bellowed the flesh lump eater. It's the grueful, grunches Jack. Jack is after me. Jack is whack crackling me. Jack is spike stickling me. Jack is splash plunking me. It is the terrible fright swipping black, fright swipping Jack. The flesh lump eater was writhing about on the ground like a colossal tortured snake. Oh, spare me, Jack, he yelled. Don't hurt me, Jack. Who is this Jack he's on about? Sophie whispered. Jack is the only human being all giants is frightened of, the BFG told her. They is all absolutely terrified of Jack. They is hearing that Jack is a famous giant killer. Save me, screamed the flesh lump eater. Have mercy on this poor little giant, the beanstalk. He is coming at me with this terrible spike stickling beanstalk take it away i is begging you jack i is praying you not to touch me with your terrible spike splickling beanstalk us giants the bfg whispered is not knowing very much about this dreaded human being called jack we is knowing only that he is a famous giant killer and that he's owning something called a beanstalk we is knowing also that the beanstalk is a fearsome thing and that Jack is using it to kill giants. Sophie couldn't stop smiling. What is you giggling at? The BFG asked her, slightly nettled. I'll tell you later, Sophie said. The awful nightmare had now gripped the great brute to such an extent that he was tying his whole body into knots. Don't do it, Jack, he screeched. I was not eating you, Jack. I has never eaten human beans. I swear, I has never gobbled a single human bean in all my wholesome life. Liar, said the BFG. Just then, one of the flesh lump eater's flailing fists caught the still fast asleep, meat-gripping giant smack in the mouth. At the same time, one of his furiously thrashing legs kicked the snoring gizzard-gulping giant right in the guts. Both the injured giants woke up and leaped to their feet. He is swiping me right in the mouth, yelled the meat dripper. He is bungs woggling me smack in the guts, shouted the gizzard gulper. The two of them rushed at the flesh lump eater and began pounding him with their fists and feet. The wretch 
wretched flesh lump eater woke up with a bang. He awoke straight from one nightmare into another. He roared into battle, and in bellowing, thumping, rough, and tumble that followed, one sleeping giant after another either got stepped on or kicked on. Soon, all nine of them were on their feet, having the most almighty free-for-all. They punched and kicked and scratched and bit and butted each other as hard as they could. Blood flowed. Noses went crunch. Teeth fell out like hailstones. The giants roared and screamed and cursed, and for many minutes the noise of battle rolled across the yellow plain. The BFG smiled, a big wide smile, of absolute pleasure. I is loving it when they is all having a good tough rumble, he said. They'll kill each other, Sophie said. Never, the BFG answered. Those beasts is always walloping at one another. But soon it will be getting dusky, and they will be galloping off to their fil to fill their tummies. They're coarse and foul and filthy, Sophie said. I hate them. As the BFG headed back to the cave, he said quietly, We certainly was putting that nightmare to good use, though, wasn't we? Excellent use, Sophie said. Well done, you. Actually, it wasn't as long as I thought because there were quite a few photographs in this chapter. Um, I'm just going to show you the ones of the, the giants fighting, because it's like the funniest. Okay. That was chapter 13. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you are enjoying all of these. I hope you are listening to them every single day. I also hope that you're doing a little bit of work every day, whether it's I ready or achieve or happy numbers. Don't forget to check out our Google Classroom and don't forget to su subscribe to our channel so that you can see all of our updates. We miss you. We hope you're doing well. Stay safe and healthy. Miss Carp, out.